Let's pray this morning. Father, we come into your presence this morning. Thank you for this time together again. Thank you for an opportunity to be able to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. God, I thank you how you moved this week in uh, so many <coughs> lives here with all people, God. For the little Sawyer and all the prayers that went up, God, you heard them. I thank you for that and for Brenda Sims. And Lord, I pray that you would touch her this morning. and God, just give her strength to get through this, Lord. And there were all these folks, Lord, who are dealing with health issues, Lord, with cancer and other things, God, and heart issues, would you touch them in a mighty way, Father? Would you touch us this morning as we try to share from your word? I pray that it would come to life. Lord, we'd be excited about what you've done, Lord, in your resurrection. And God, as we go into the play, Lord, I pray that you'd bless it. I mean, with everything that takes place, God, Lord, we need your touch. I pray even, Lord, through our failures, God, you would save many, Father, for your glory and honor. May they reach many. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Luke 24. Now, next Sunday, I told you we're uh, going to take next Sunday off, so if you're going to get up and go to Sunday school, I guess you're going to go somewhere else next Sunday. Because uh, <laughs> we're going to be sort of busy. Thursday night, Friday night, two times Saturday, then we all going to be wore out. So I myself going to come into the house of God Sunday morning to worship. So remember next Sunday, no Sunday school for the rock. Uh, now we're going to look, we looked at Jesus in the Old Testament last week in Isaiah 53 with him on the cross. And now we're going to look in the New Testament in Luke 24 and go ahead and look at the resurrection here of our Lord. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. There is a great study with the resurrections. You know, you can go to 1 Corinthians 15, which is called the resurrection chapter, and uh, gives a lot of great details that God gave the Apostle Paul in that, and, and during the uh, talking about the resurrection and how immortality, uh, immortal shall put on immortality and how we're going to be changed and John talks about it in uh, uh, 1 John chapter 3 and how we are going to take on the image of Christ and we're going to see maybe in a moment but maybe we won't look at those scriptures but be like last week I couldn't find the right one but there was a time after the resurrection when the disciples was gathered together uh, that evening when Jesus just appeared through the walls and all of them there gathered together. So uh, there's a lot of things in the scripture that you can read and study about the resurrection. Now, today we're going to find ourselves in Luke 24 and verse number 1 says, Now upon the first day of the week, which is Sunday, all right, it, it's still the first day of the week. Uh, it's Sunday. It's even on our calendar. So after the Sabbath, Sunday was the first day of the week, the Sabbath being Saturday. So upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Now, <coughs> Uh, if you can imagine this scene as they're coming, it's still dark or right at daylight, right at dawn. They get to the tomb. He's not there. Uh, after they've seen him beaten, you remember we saw last week, they saw him that his visage was so marred that he didn't look like a man. All the things he went through, the humiliation upon the cross, and then he took upon sin, became sin for us. Now they have placed him in the tomb. And a uh, matter of fact, if you'll look back in, in chapter 23, you'll see in the latter part there, maybe in verse 52, uh, it's talking about, uh, uh, what's his name? That Joseph of Arimathea went and took down the body of Jesus. And verse 53 said he took it down, wrapped it in linen, laid it upon a sepulcher, that was honed in a stone wherein never a man before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. So the women, they got together in verse 55. The women also which came with him from Galilee followed after 
and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And the spices, they, and they returned to prepare spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So they'd done nothing on that Saturday because they didn't want to be in violation of the Sabbath. So they come now, the first day of the week, that early Sunday morning, and they find the stone rolled away. Now, why was the stone rolled away? Was it to let Jesus out? No. It was to let the disciples in. And so they found the stone rolled away, and they found <laughs> not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass in verse 4, they were perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And just a little footnote, you will always find the gen male gender with the angels. Just a another footnote there as we're studying through the Word of God. Now verse 5, And they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, and they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? And you know it's amazing. Uh, they went to anoint his body, yet he wasn't there. And I know a lot of people in, in, nowadays will, uh, when they got a loved one or something, they will find themselves maybe a few times after the 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 funeral and all that, going by to the graveside, you know, and going by and laying out flowers and doing remembrance and those things. But you know what? If they are a child of God and were a child of God, they're not there. That body is going to be pulled out of the ground. It's going to raise just as Jesus was raised. But the hope we have, what separates us as believers, is that we have a resurrected Savior. That's the importance. That's the difference between all other religions right. in the world. And I hate to even use the term religion, but that's what we are. Uh, they talk about all the different religions, but Jesus is not in the tomb. So they were perplexed. That means they was just they couldn't believe what they were seeing. And he said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? And verse 6 says, He is not here, but is risen. And then remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. The importance of remembering the scriptures. A lot of times we have hide scriptures in our heart and things and we don't uh, recall them until the Holy Ghost brings them up at the time when we need it. It's amazing how we find ourselves. We won't be thinking about a passage of scripture. We'll just be doing whatever and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will bring that scripture up. Well here, the angels had to remind them and I want you to remember this scripture that we're reading here because Jesus is going to mention it several times here. But remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered in the hand of sinful men and must be crucified and the third day rise again. And then, verse 8, the sweetest words here, they remembered his words. It's amazing how in our time of need that God brings up his word, all at the right time. And then he says in verse 9, They returned to the sepulchre and told the things unto the eleven and all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and jo Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Now, uh, let me just do a little uh, study, of him, if you will. Now, in Matthew, as count of the, revel uh, the resurrection, you will find that uh, after they saw not the body of Jesus, they left and returned, and the uh, women said, as Jesus appeared to them, uh, made shown who he was, and the Bible says that they uh, grabbed him around his feet. Okay, that's Matthew's account of the women, plural there. But the order is, you will go and look in uh, the, the Mark's account of it, and you will see that he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, of whom he cast out seven devils. So Mary Magdalene here, uh, Luke tells us, was there 
And but what happened is she stayed alone. If you read John 20, you'll find out that the other ladies left. Mary Magdalene was there by herself, weeping because the body was not there. And the angel said to her, "You know what's all this array? What are you so uh, upset about? He is not here. You seek the living among the dead. He's not here. He's risen." And she thought somebody done stole the body. Well. About that time, Jesus appears to Mary while the other women are gone. She's by herself. He appears to Mary first, and she supposed him to be what? The gardener. And so then he called her by name. See, that's the important. You'll find out that God knows our name. He calls us by name. You think about uh, when the Apostle Paul was in the book of Acts there, and uh, uh, that devil... Uh, that guy was trying to cast out demons in the name of Jesus and all these others, and the demons said what? He said, Paul I know, and Silas I know, but who are you? Yeah. Now you remember that, uh, that when Jesus went to the uh, tomb of that maniac man there in Gadara, and there was a couple of them there by the way, and they couldn't hold them, they couldn't put chains on them, they'd bust them, and what did the demons say? Have you come to uh, torture us or to kill us before our time? Have you come to do that? They even know who Jesus was. But God knows our name. The devils know who he is. <laughs> the devil knows even if we're a child of God. Because why? Because there's things that happen in the spiritual realm that we can't see. We are limited with our eyes right here to this physical realm. But if we could somehow, God pull away the veil on our eyes, and we could even look outside and maybe even look in these rafters right here, the spiritual warfare that's taking place, there is a hedge around us. There is a hedge right now around every one of us. What did uh, the devil say to God about Job, he said, if you will release that hedge and let me go in, then I will, uh, you know, destroy him and his family and all, and he'll curse you to your face. What God do? God lowered the hedge. God made a little opening where he could get in. But you know what? We're sealed as believers. There's a hedge around us. The devil would love to blow this building down right now. The devil would love to come in here and kill us right now. But God has a work for us to do. There is a hedge about his children. So even the devil knows uh, who is because we have a seal and we have a seal in our foreheads. You can look in Revelation. But I'm telling you, when God calls us, he calls us by name. He even numbers and names the stars, the Bible tells us. He knows each hair on your head, and I'm not giving him too many to keep up with. He's trying to make it a little easier on it. But, amen. but he knows each and every one of us. God knows us by name. If the same God can know the stars and name them and has all of our tears in a bottle, I'm talking about what a God we serve. And we serve the risen Lord. And he called Mary. When he said Mary, then she knew that it was not the gardener. And so she approached him. And he said what? Touch me not. I have not yet ascended to my father. But go and tell the disciples that I have risen as I said. So at that point, she, he saw Mary. Mary saw him for who he was. And then... He left and he went to the mercy seat. He got up. He told Mary. He went to the mercy seat. He done the sacrifice, all the priestly things. When that was accomplished, then he came back. And then, when uh, at the point that the others saw him and they held him, and also that afternoon he entered into um, the uh, walls. He come through the walls where the disciples were. And everybody there but Thomas, he was not there with them. And so uh, he doubted even when they told him. Well, and so then that afternoon we find ourselves as he is leaving, as these disciples are leaving, this is where we find ourselves in our text this morning. He's going through 
uh, to Emmaus. So let's pick up in verse 13, if you will. And so this is that afternoon. And behold, two of them went the same day, which is Sunday, the resurrection day, to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. That's about six and a half miles. And they talked together of all the things that had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Watch verse 16. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. You see, God is only going to reveal things to you when he wants to. You must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added <coughs> unto you. But I'm telling you, God gives us revelation as we need it. And there are a lot of, what does the Bible say? Eyes not seen, nor is ear heard, neither has it in the heart of man. The things that God had pertaining for them that love him. Well, listen, God shows us things. If God showed us everything that's going to take place, we would just check out of here. We don't want to know what's going to happen in the future. We may think we do. All we can do is believe and give us this day our daily bread as the Scripture teaches us to do. I, I mean, Randy, if you could sing the next day you was going to have that wreck and get your arm all tore up, well, you wouldn't want to do that. Amen. And you'd have done that. You would, you would have sold your players. I mean, you know, you would have not ever got on one. But God knows what we, you know, Joe, I'm sure you had a cow kick a time or two trying to get up there and milk them cows. Boy, I'm telling you, you don't know what's going to happen. But God does. God uh, put a hold on their eyes. They couldn't see who he was just the same way Mary couldn't at the start, at the uh, tomb. He said unto them, What manner of communications are these you have one to another as you walk in a sand? And one of them whose name was Cleopas answered said unto him, Man, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which have come to pass in these days? He's like, Man, are you, where you been? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Where have you been? Now, uh, if it had been in all day, this has been all of the crucifixion and everything, it's been all over Facebook, yeah. it's been on Twitter, it would be in videos, it'd be on the news. I mean, it'd just be instant communication. Well, they's like, you know, where you been? And he said unto them, what things? Verse 19. And then they said, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, in word, before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and all rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Now watch this. But we trusted. That means they was believers. We trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. They believed him to be the redeemer. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. And then he said, but, but let me tell you the rest of the story. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. Now this is the evening as they were walking along. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said he was alive. I mean, can you imagine the emotions going on right now? Yeah. I mean, they're up and they're down, the same thing with life. I mean, we can be... At a surgery or something and everything can be going good and man we're floating yeah. and all of a sudden uh, an instrument makes a, a noise and the body starts shaking and things and then all of a sudden we're down in the gutter. Yeah. I mean and then boy when they come through we're right back up. Well they have seen our Lord beating, dying, dead in the sepulchre. <clears throat> And now they found out that he was alive. They hadn't seen him. He's walking with them. They didn't know who he was. They're all emotional, man. I mean, my goodness, they can't figure it all out. And he said, they made us astonished. They went in, they found not his body. Then he said, when they found not his body, in verse 23, they came saying that they have seen the vision of angels. He was alive, and certain of them with us went to the sepulchre. And they found it even as the women had said but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, watch this, O fools, 
and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now, I can imagine their countenance changed a little bit. Who do you think you are calling me a fool? All the stuff I done been through in these last few days. We believe that this was Jesus. You're a stranger, evidently. You don't even know what's going on. And you're going to call me a fool. And notice this now. And slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? What a question. And then beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now I tell you, as I told you before, that's got to be one glorious message to hear. And I can't wait to hear that one day as God himself goes back to Moses and just ties the scripture. That ought to be a good study. We might have to do that one time. It'd take a few weeks, but we might just have to go back and try to get in some chronological order. It doesn't matter if it's chronological or not, but we go through and tie all the scriptures together leading up to Jesus. So that's what he's saying. He said he took and began at Moses and all the prophets. Now what did Moses do? Well, Moses spoke about it. He saw him. Spouting unto them in all the scriptures a thing concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village where they went. This means they had been walking for six and a half miles. Now we can stroll on pretty good, but I know it takes me about 15 minutes to run a mile. Uh, so now everybody ain't Dr. Matheny. Now she can run one in 11 minutes. I mean, she can go and she's. Bad timing then for her, but I'm telling you, this was a long walk. This took a while to get this message out. Man, I'm sure that was something uh, amazing there. Well, they drew nigh to the village in verse 28. Where they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. Well, they done built kind of a... Can you imagine hearing this man preach this message as he walking on? And he's just going to act like he's going to go on. But they constrained him in verse 29, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward the evening, and the day is far spent. It's getting dark. And he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass as he said, It meet with them, verse 30. They took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them. And then look what happened in verse 31. After he blessed it, their eyes was open, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. <laughs> now can you imagine now, uh, here's this stranger you thought was a stranger. This man is no more, uh, nothing else but the Son of God. He is the very one. They still didn't know who he was. Just thought, man, what a message this guy has brought. You, you come on in, it's dark, just stay with us tonight. You know, we made it home and he took the bread and he blessed it. Now, he may have prayed something like the same prayer he prayed about the 5,000 when he fed them. Well, the 4,000 when he fed them. And the women and children. I don't know what kind of prayer he prayed. I can only imagine. But I do know this. When he blessed it and break it and gave to them, their eyes was open. God pulled those scales off. They saw who he was. This simply tells me that it takes the Holy Spirit to open a person's eyes. We can sit there and tell them all day long with their need of Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we ought to do that. We ought to show them Jesus. But until the Holy Spirit opens their eyes just like He did with you, then it's not going to be open. But He blessed it. And I don't know what He said. But it, it, he opened their eyes and then he vanished out of their sight. Now, when he vanished out of their sight, where did he go? That's may have been when he went to the disciples. But I just know that's something we've got to look forward to in glory. Things are going to be changed when we get our glorified bodies. We're going to think something and we're going to be there. That's your proof right here. We're going to be just as he is. Can you imagine after he's prayed, they saw who he was and then gone. 
Well, that's a picture of the rapture, amen. <laughs> We're going to be sitting here minding our own business one of these days. It could happen before I even get the next breath out, the next word out. I don't know where we're going to be, but I do know He's going to come. He's going to take us out that fast, and we're going to be changed. We're going to be like Him. And notice this now. Here is uh, the first case of the heartburns in the Scripture. They said unto one another, Did not our hearts burn within us? <laughs> Your heart burns there. you got to find a little humor in the Word of God. It's okay. And while He talked with us, by the way, our hearts burned within us, man. They was getting those emotions back up. They, they were saying, wow, this is encouraging. You know it encouraged them. Mm -hmm. And they was getting revealed more and more as they was walking down that way. And he said, wow, he opened to us the Scriptures. I love it when he opens the Scriptures. Mm -hmm. When we've read things time and time again. And I, the other day I was reading John chapter 11. And, you know, the Lazarus. And... Uh, they come to uh, him, you know, four days. Well, they come to him four days early. Uh, you know, brother's sick. He's nigh unto death. And the Lord said, he's just sleeping. Don't worry. And the disciples thought, well, hey, he's doing good. He's, he's sleeping. He's resting. And they didn't realize he was talking about he was dead. He had to plainly say, Lazarus is dead. Well, then uh, they didn't understand those things. So Jesus said something to them that jumped out to me, and I've read it, I don't know how many times, but he said to them, are there not yet 12 hours in a day? I thought, I've always, and you'll hear different things on what day Jesus was crucified on. Uh, if you go to a 24 hour calendar, you will think, well, he was, uh, got to be crucified on Thursday. And then, there's other passages of scripture that says that uh, as Jesus said, as John was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, so shall the Son of Man be three days, uh, three nights, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, as John was in the whale's belly. So then Jesus said at that point, and you think about He gave the lighter day light, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and that was one day. Then you think about the scripture that says. Uh, a day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So you think about all these different days. But Jesus said that, uh, do you not know, you know that they are 12 hours in a day. So that's their 12 hour calendar. And you think about, they took him to the cross, if it was on that Friday, well they took him there, and what it was the, Ninth hour to the twelfth hour. You can read that in the scriptures. That's very plain. Then from the twelfth, uh, from twelve o'clock to three o'clock, you will see that it was dark upon the earth, and they had to get him off of the cross before the Sabbath day, because it was approaching. So, if there's twelve hours in a day according to their calendar, then maybe he was crucified on Friday. I don't know. I'm just saying that scripture jumped out. And there's other scriptures that jump out. That's the way the Lord does it. And He teaches you along. But if you're not in His Word, you're not going to get there. But I love how He just opens the scriptures to us. Now, let's just finish up right here. And so what they do? They rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. <laughs> they just thought they was tired. Somehow they done got revived. I believe they made this six and a half mile journey a little bit faster this time. Yeah, they were moving. Woo! Oh, they might have ran. They might have got there a whole lot quicker. It says, They found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and it appeared to Simon. And they told the things which were done in the way, how he was known of them, and breaking the bread. And watch this, verse 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. They were terrified and afraid and supposed they'd seen the Spirit. I bet them two guys would. <laughs> I bet they would. <clears throat> then he said unto them, Why are you troubled and why do these thoughts arise in your heart? He said, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see me have. 
And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Now, if you're reading Revelation 5, you'll see that uh, John wept because no one was found worthy to take the book and loose the seals thereof. And then they stood one as it had a lamb that had been slain. No doubt in glory we're going to see his nail prints mm -hmm. in his hands, in his feet, and in his side. Verse 45, and I'm done. Let's just skip on down. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. It takes the Lord. Yes. Open our eyes. Mm -hmm. Even now as believers, God still has to open our eyes yes. so we can understand the scriptures. All this can, week after week, staying in here, uh, is nothing unless that's why you'll hear me pray Lord give us understanding give us wisdom because I can sit up here and talk all day long it doesn't matter unless God shows us something we'll get nothing Father thank you for your words this morning we praise you and we love you look forward to this day we praise you for it in Jesus name Amen, Amen.